I was uh, looking at the word this afternoon and was wondering what exactly we should be dealing with tonight until God began to give me inspiration. I perceive and then I begin to have inspiration. And then briefly, I think um, I'm going to be talking about dreams. How many of you have had dreams in your life? Dream. You've ever had a dream? Let me see your hand. Dream. Different kind of dream. How many of you can count how many dreams you've had since you were born? Okay, okay. But how many of you can remember at least 20 dreams? At least 20 dreams. You are wrong. That's where the problem is. Since you were born, you cannot remember 20 of the thousands of dreams you've been having. You can't remember at least 20. That's where the problem is. Okay. How many of you have had more than 10 dreams last year? Just for last year. You had more than 10 dreams. More than 10. How many of you can remember six? Eh? Now, but of all the dreams, there will be one or two that you will find it difficult to forget, especially if it has to do with the activity you are doing at the moment. Am I right? Okay, example, you've had a dream, maybe you're a carpenter and you see yourself in the shop making cheer. You, you will hardly forget. Am I right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a little time to talk about dreams and we will take time to pray. And if God puts his word, words in my mouth, of course, we all know I will speak it. Dreams. Dreams are biblical. It's biblical to dream. O on Sunday, I was trying to say something little about it and then we, God took us to a different you know, dimension after a positive distraction. <laughs> I think that distraction was a good one. I think I need to be distracted once in a while by God. Amen. Okay, I was trying to tell you that you cannot dream if you are not in a deep sleep. You cannot dream if you are not in a deep sleep. Now, any dream you have when you are not in a deep sleep is not a dream. It's a vision. When you are not in a deep sleep and you still have dreams, when you are not necessarily into a deep sleep, such is called vision. Why revelation can through either vision or what? Dream. You see that? So nobody can have a dream without him, he or she going through a deep sleep. That kind of sleep that Adam went through, that even the side of his body was open and a rib was removed and yet he never knew. That kind of dream that you will have, that inside the dream you are sleeping and you are dreaming and you are still dreaming, you wake up, you are still dreaming, you find yourself walking inside your room, you are still dreaming and you lay down and wake up in the morning and ask people, who carry you from this location to this location? And they say, we saw you walking. And you say, no, I was sleeping. That's a deep sleep. Deep sleep. I've asked that question even when I grew up, when I, when I was 
19 or 20 years, I've asked that question. I was sleeping outside on a bench. And in the morning, I saw myself in the room. I said, wow, God is wonderful. I vanished from outside. And I appeared inside. I was sharing it as a testimony during morning devotion. My mother said, hmm? <laughs> said, for your mind. <laughs> say you, I woke you up. I said, go inside. Then you stood up. You even left pillow. I said, come and carry pillow. You came back and carried pillow with your leg. And you went back inside. I was in a deep sleep. That kind of sleep that you even wake up and you will not know. My daughter Saunas went into a very deep sleep and she finished a plate of food. They were feeding her and she was eating, feeding her. And eat. She woke up in the morning and said, you people ate yesterday and didn't give me my own. Deep sleep. Let me surprise you that 100% not 98, not 99. 100% of everything that has ever happened to you and will ever happen to you and the one that is still happened to you, you have seen them in dreams. It's just that you cannot remember. Nothing. I'm not just talking it with belief. I'm not just talking this because you're a believer. Everybody on earth has a perception to dream. You re and the only way you can relate with the spirit world is when your body is at rest. You cannot relate with spirit when your body is still active and alive. You relate with spirit world when you are completely out of your sense. Your sense cannot relate with God. God has problem with your sense. Before God will begin to speak to you, he will have to shift your sense and make it look like it's foolish. It will make it look like it's foolish. Then he will begin to translate his intentions to you. Anybody that is wise in his own way cannot see God or hear God. Before that sickness came, before that accident happened, before that neighbor died, before that husband gets sick, before that wife, you know, before you built that house, whether good or bad, you might have seen them in your dream. Reason. The rules that govern the other side of life is different from the rules that governs this other side of life. This other side of life, that it's, it's governed by time, season, the effect of time, season, you know, and what again? Yes, you know, yes. It's locked up within the season of awareness. The moment you begin to have dreams, ladies and gentlemen, what time cannot give you, dream will give it to you in one hour. Dream can take you within one hour that you sleep. Dream can make you travel to generation that is about 1,000 generation behind. And point it point by point. You call it one hour because it is the time of consciousness. But in that zone, it's not one hour. One million years of that zone is like one second of this zone. And it can happen in the fastest medium of life. Pray. If you have ever dreamed before, I dare you to dream again. I dare you to dream again. I dare you to dream again. I'm not talking about the dream that you will have when you are perceiving that Deaconess Esther hated you and then you are pondering it in your heart. Then you slept. 
Then you will not have dream that she's flogging you. That's a mental picture. That one is a mental picture. You know, it gets dream that you will have when you are perceiving that your husband is cheating on you. And then that night, you now saw him with a lady. And if the devil wants to bring the accurate confusion, that lady will be your closest friend. Then you will now wake up and say, eh? My closest friend? But remember that before you had that sleep, there were thoughts that, you know, surround your mind, you know, and all that. That's not the kind of one we're talking about. We're talking about the one you had a sincere prayer. You may not really be thinking about anything, right? You're just thinking about those good things God has in store for you, you know, and all that. And then you fell asleep. And then when you sleep, in the period you are not feeling sleeping and sleep comes, it means God cause you into a deep sleep. There's something I told you sometime. I said, don't sleep because you are feeling sleeping. At times you should sleep because there's something you need to know about God or about life. Okay, there are people who were students, a lot of people who are students here, where they say when you take Nescafe, you take um, other, you put your leg inside water, or whatsoever to read. He said, you know, go feel sleep. They didn't know they work for me. If I bring some of my handouts to you, you will laugh. Speed nearly spoil all my handouts. Sleep, uh, speed, handouts. I can't help it. I want to read. I took Nescape over those. I still slept. I kept those hands out there. I will show my children. Daddy, what happened to this hand? I said, my spittle when I was in school. I slept. I'm a resemble person with feed one. Amen. Dream. Turn to somebody. It's going to be very interesting. Don't worry. Turn to somebody. Even if your face is turning to the person you don't like. Look at the person. Make sure you're looking at somebody. The person, if the person you are looking at is looking at someone else, find the person, find someone to look. The person is not interested in you. Just find someone. If he's looking at someone else, look for a different person. Make sure you're looking at somebody. The person you are looking at, make sure he's looking at you. You, who they look? Then tell the person, dare to dream. Say, dare to dream. Tell him it's good to dream. I'm speaking to you right now like a child of God. After tonight, you will never forget your dreams. I read through my Bible and I find out about 21 dreams written and documented by men like us in the Bible. The dreams were supposed to be up to 28, but seven out of those dreams we are translated as visions. So, since the Bible put them as vision, they were actually called vision. But then I saw it that there are 21 dreams in the Bible. Only Genesis has 10. Genesis has 10. Judges has 1. Kings has 1. I think Daniel has three. I wrote them somewhere. Genesis has ten. Judges has one. Kings has one. Daniel has three. And Matthew had six. 
Matthew has six documented. You sum it to 21 dreams. I am going to pick one person and we'll deal with that tonight. And if God permits, I will subsequently keep picking but understand that we're dealing with the mystery of dreams. I have had a dream, you know, the year we did Tarazo here, I shared that testimony. The year we were doing Tarazo here, there was this money I had and God told me to just put Tarazo in church. So, we, myself and Pastor Zakai were just sharing and then they began to walk. Now, but before I put the terrazzo, I had a dream that a certain work was going on in the church. And I was seated in the office and a certain work was going on in church. And the day that we had to finish the work, I had no money to pay them. In that dream. So in that dream, I said, Tom, in trying to dodge I decide to walk out. I told the apostles that I'm coming. So in my mind, if they want to catch whoever that should pay, they should catch my pastors in that dream. So I walked out and I stood by this Yaron Sule filling station. Then it was Owandu. You know, I stood there and a man walked to me and gave me money to come and complete the payment. And then I came and paid. But in that dream, I could not remember what exactly the work that was going on in the church. So here comes Tarazo work, and through through the day they were supposed to finish, I had no money. I now remember that dream. I left my car and I walk and I stood by that filling station. I could remember the person that gave me that money in the dream. I could remember. I stood there. Pastor! <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I stood there. Two hours. If, I, if I'm tired, I'll change. I stood there. Suddenly, I saw a man walking. Now, the difference between what happened in a real sense with what had happened in that dream, this is the difference. The difference was that the man walked to me. But this one that I'm seeing that resembled the man is walking away. Okay. I'm going somewhere. Just get it. This man resembled the one I saw in my dream. He was not wearing the same clothes. But the face look familiar. Then I walk to him. I say, Oga, come. I want to talk to you. Oga, you appeared to me in my dream. And you gave me a certain money. I'm not going to tell you how much. They are working for me in the church. Give me the money. He dip his hand in his pocket and gave me exact amount that I was to settle the people in church here. I told him, thank you. And I left. Then I remember I need to get his phone number and I came back. I didn't see him. I paid them. And they left. If I had forgotten the dream, Am I talking to somebody here? If I had forgotten the dream, I would not have known what to do. I will call who I am not supposed to have called. We have done that several times. And talk to who I am not supposed to have talked to. But listen, look at the question. The question is, why is it that in dream he comes straight to you? But in a real sense, he wasn't coming straight to you. The difference is this. 
in that wall, spirit has no obstacles. They meet, you understand, with that restriction. In this wall, there are obstacles. The one you acquire from your father, in that realm, there's no father, there's no mother, there's no brother, there's no sister. In this realm, you have father, you have mother, you have brother, you have sister. In that realm, you don't give account of your friend. In this realm, you give account of your friend. So here, there are a lot of obstacles. And that's why the Bible will say, walk after you are being saved. He said, walk out your what? Salvation with fear and trembling. Even though Jesus died for the whole world, you need to still rise up and say, I accept him. After you accepted him, you need to still pray for the sick. You know, you, you continue working it out until you become. Why? Because of the obstacles around you. We have mind obstacles. If you are having dream, if you are in the dream, your mind is down. If you are in this real world, you, are, you will now be updated with every information. It is only in this world that you always remember who offended you. If you are dreaming, you don't remember. You only face what you are supposed to. So, so some of those obstacles, some of the things we face every day can thwart answers from us. I share with us here some years ago, 2014, of a crazy miracle that has happened to me concerning my house rent. A crazy miracle. The house rent expired. I wasn't having money. That was a season where we were doing project here. And I didn't want to bother church. And then I lay down on the ground. And a fat man, like an Igbo man. Fat. If I said, I'm not saying Igbo men are fat. Amara. Tunde is not an Igbo man. Deaconess. There are Igbos that we are rejected. Amen. So, <laughs> so he came like an Igbo man because of his intonation. Remember, I was sleeping. And then he entered into my house and he said, I have a problem, Pastor. Then I told him, I said, I also have a problem. And then he said, What is your problem? I said, My house rent. I said, Solve my problem. And I solved your problem. In that dream, he now said, ah, your husband, how much? I said, it's 200,000. That was then. He said, it's 200,000. And then he said, okay, uh, I don't have money now, but uh, when is the husband expired? I said, it has expired. He said, oh, okay. Um, let me have the receipt. In that dream, and I went and looked for the receipt. And then he said, okay, I'm going to change the date of the husband. We will shift it for one month ahead. So that within that month, we are going to have money to come and pay. I said, okay. In that dream, I find the receipt I gave him. He did his hand like this and he changed the date from July to August. You understand? Then I woke up. We didn't conclude the discussion, no. I woke up. I went and looked for the receipt. I said, where is my husband receipt? When I picked the receipt, I saw the date changed to August. And I went and met my landlord. I said, we are making a mistake here. I'm renewing this husband differently. You have your duplicate there. Can we check what is written there? He now check. It was changed to August. He now said, sorry, you. maybe my mind was ticking July. Whereas my hand is writing August. But me, I know what has happened. <laughs> Don't talk with your dreams. It works. Now, that August, we were in a meeting in Lafia. Remember how God is going to deal with you some certain times when he had already given you the assurance and you are conscious of what has already happened and you see the sign of what has already happened. Mark it. And at times the day he was supposed to make it happen, most times you tend to forget. But there must be one or two signs that will make you remember that what has happened is the time. It may not happen, the sign may not happen exactly how you saw, but there must be some traces that will help you understand that this one look like what the assurance I had while praying, or the assurance I had while sleeping, or the assurance. It will always interpret something to you. I was in Lafia when my PA called me. He said somebody called him and stood at total and gave him 250,000. He said go and give your pastor. 
to go and pay his house rent. I said, the number he called you, you still have the number? He said, yes. I said, text me the number so I can appreciate him. Right in Lafia, he texted me the number. I tried the number. He said, the number you died does not exist. In MTN network, please check the number. We were looking for money one time. Me and Pastor Ezekiel we were in the office when money fell. You remember? There are dimensions. And it doesn't happen every day. Now, I have a request. May people help me pray for this request. My own personal problem, God knows they do, I don't know why. If it is for his work, no matter how difficult that situation is, I handle it. But if it is my own personal wahala, raise your hand up. Say, Pastor, have a request. Shout it again. Say, Pastor Miracle has a special request. Oh God. He said, you don't answer him. If he has his personal issue. But your issue, you the answer. Help me ask God. Say, why? I want God. I know he's here. You know, it would be sounding like we are joking here right now, but I know God is listening. I suffer when it has to do with my personal issues. I will fast and fast. Now, when I have my personal issue, people diverse naturally with me. But if it is issue with God, then go, hey, pastor, he's well, oh, hey, pastor, he's well, oh, he's well, oh. I don't know why God is designing it like that. I know I will get to understand shortly. I know it's something he's trying to explain and he's trying to do some whole stuff. I've carried my personal issues. And I, I told him, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gathering money to buy a car. I gather, 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 tire. When I bring gospel into it, somebody came and testified. And I know what to do. We're putting gospel into it, putting gospel into it. <laughs> but God is not a man. God is not a man. Dream. <laughs> dream. I'm not talking about the dream that you only dream that they are pursuing you with a knife. That is also okay. Not all of these dreams are fictions. Some are actually reality. So that we don't, so that we don't think those things don't exist. Pursuing people in dream is real. But only seeing yourself being pursued. No. If they are pursuing you in dream, I pray for you today. You will start pursuing your pursuers. Yeah. I said from today, you will not be the one running away while someone is pursuing you. You will be pursuing somebody while he is running away. Yeah. Can you shout the believing amen? Yeah. Dream. Take one as a case study. You remembered Abraham. The Bible said God revealed himself to Abraham. God bless you. There are dimensions he will say in a vision. There are dimensions he will say in a dream. But whichever way Abraham began that journey after that encounter and got to a place where Abimelech was the king of that particular land. Look at it. Before Abraham got to that land, I want you to know that God wants to begin a nation and a generation in Abraham. So the whole world didn't know God. The whole world do not know how God operates. But Abraham, God revealed himself to Abraham and said, through Abraham, the whole world will know how God operates. Get it? Now, Abraham who had met God and nobody had met God, Abraham met God. And then while he was walking and they got to that land, look at it. He said he perceived that the people of that land do not fear God. 
The word fear there is not being afraid, but fear there means do not respect God. He perceived that the people of this land has no respect for God. So, he decided to go into an agreement with his wife that we have to come this way. Whichever way you will see it, if it is a lie, fine. But he didn't say it, that let's lie. He said, no, but we should just say you are my sister. Say I am your brother. What you will do for me is, these people can kill me because of you. And whatever Abraham perceived was true. Because in that land, they do not fear God. A king that can marry whoever he wants to marry any time, any day, and any given condition does not fear God. And as they were entering, it was like a joke. It was not the king that saw Sarah. His men saw Sarah. And they said, Kai, this one will be good for our king. Not for them. There is a one they will know that Kai, this one is not king level. is our level. But Sarah on was king level. And at that time, Sarah was 65 years. She was 65 years old. But the Bible says she was attractive and very beautiful at the age of 65 because Abraham was 75 years old then. And he's 10 years older than his wife. So when they went and told Abimelech, Abimelech said, bring her here. And like joke, when he saw Sarah, I'm going somewhere, we're dealing with dreams. When he saw Sarah, he approved the fact that she was beautiful. And then he asked her, who is that man? And she said, he's my brother. They fetched Abraham. He even gave Abraham a gift. He didn't ask Abimelech, if he fears God truly, he will ask, where is your father? Where is your mother? Because no marriage can be established with, without the agreement of either father or mother. But Abraham said, my sister, and you decide to pay bright price to the brother and take the wife. Where is the father? It means indeed, Abimelech did not, does not fear God. So Abraham was right in his perception that Abimelech or the people of the land do not fear God. So in his perception, he was right. Then look at it. He took Abraham, Abraham's wife, in the guise of a sister, but truly she's actually his wife. God did not plan to reveal himself through anybody aside Abraham. But because Sarah was taken, God appeared, the holy God appeared to an unholy man. He said, for without holiness, no I shall see the Abimelech saw the Lord in his unholy. Going to somewhere. He didn't see God in his conscious mind. He saw God in his subconscious or unconscious mind where his senses cannot fight, where his senses cannot stand. Every complexity of the activity going within his mind is broken down. Then God revealed to him, he said, I will kill you. I am the God of that man. You took the wife. Look at it. It was a dream. If you read it, Genesis 12. It was a dream. It was a dream. He, he said, take this man's wife back. He said, for he is my prophet. Go and let him pray for you. Ladies and gentlemen, when Abimelech wake up, he said, hey, Abraham lied. Dude. It was Abimelech that said Abraham lied. It was not God. Huh? It was Abimelech that said so. It was not God that said so. It was Abimelech that said so. So Abraham, you lied. You told me she was your sister. Abraham now said, indeed she was my sister, oh, a daughter of my father. And not a daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. You have not read it? 
He said, indeed. She was my sister. The Bible says God punished Abimelech for that singular act he saw. So it means our enemies can dream too about us. Raise your right hand up. I'm about to go to somewhere. If there's anything your enemy has taken from you, it is possible that Abraham must have seen and understood that his wife will be taken. And he did not understand how to solve it. But God decided to forget about him and step into the enemy's environment and begin to handle. Raise your hand up. In the name that is greater than every other name, may your enemies begin to have dreams on how to return your victory back to you. Whatever they take from you and their heart is so adamant, their heart is so tight, is so stiff, that they are not willing to release it back to you. I decree and I declare, they have been taken, it can be through your ignorance. It can be through some of the things you have done as human beings. But God will overlook you because you are his son or daughter. I see him visiting the camp of your enemy again. I put your enemy into dreams. May they begin to have dreams concerning the God you serve. May they never take advantage of your weakness to deal with you. Can you shout a believing amen? amen? Well, the Bible says Abraham lied. We've had different sermons that said Jacob lied. I mean, um, um, Isaac lied also to another generation called Abimelech. He met not the same Abimelech. It's a different generation of that same king that be Abimelech. If it were in this generation, they would say Abimelech the first, Abimelech the second, Abimelech the third. So it was not the same man Abraham met that um, Isaac met. It could be a great grandson or a son that they he decided. I mean, they met in his own generation, their own generation. Now, Isaac lied. So it means that there's something about Abraham that Isaac inherited which was not right. Sarah took a very long while before she conceived. Rebecca took a very long while before she conceived. So it shows that there's something uh, these guys are dealing with in their bloodline. I'm not going to dwell there much, but I'm dealing with dreams. Keep following. We're going to, we'll, we'll soon arrive in the next few minutes. Six, seven, eight minutes will soon arrive. Now, Rebecca eventually conceived after a very long while of being barren. That's how the Bible puts it. So she eventually got became pregnant. And while the children were growing at a certain point, and the Bible says they began to trouble her. And then she now said, let me go and inquire of the Lord. And in her inquiries, I want you to understand that the revelation was dreams. So in her inquiries, an angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, there are two nations in your womb. One, the, the, the younger shall be greater than the, 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 the older. The older shall serve the younger. And yes, and they gave their names unconsciously. They will not understand. They gave their names unconsciously to Jacob. They don't know that they sum up the activity of the father Abraham and the activity of the father Isaac and brought the fulfillment of such activity in Jacob. And they call him deceiver. So Jacob was given deceiver not because God called him deceiver. God sees him a leader. But because they are an understanding that we cannot understand exactly why they do that. But they call him deceiver. So he began to grow with that nature of being a deceiver within his spirit. Now, to sum up the whole thing up, he deceived his brother and took the birthright of his brother. But even that birthright that looks like he deceived his brother to take it was already given to him by God right from the womb. But since he's already a deceiver, he will have to craftily take those stuffs into him by the assistance of his own mother. So at that point, now the mother became the chief of staff. And I encouraged him and advised him well on how to take that. Then get it. The father had blessed him. Jacob left with his bag and his staff. 
why he got to a particular place in Genesis chapter number 28. Why he got to a certain place, the Bible says he was tired. That would have been the place God would have changed the life of Jacob. Ask me why. Now, follow me. To change his name would have been in that same spot. He picked a stone and made it a pillow. Look at it. The Bible says a ladder. It, he had a dream. It was in a dream. And he saw a ladder from the heaven to the earth. So the end of the ladder down had a connection to the ground. It means he can see the first step. He may not have seen the last step upward, but at least he saw God standing at one of the steps of a ladder above there. And then he saw God, God speaking to him. Look at it. He said, I am the God of your father, Abraham and Isaac. Look at it. He said, this land I will give you. Look at it. Jacob just woke up and said, so God is in this place and I do not know it. And then he named the place better. But there's something beyond that. The Bible says angels we are ascending and ascending and descending upon the ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, angels do not need ladder to climb up. Only men need ladder to climb up. The ladder was not for angels. The ladder was for Jacob. God is standing here and he set ladder to Jacob. He said, Jacob, the reason for this is for you to come up. I need to change you before you be in Laban or else what you will face in Laban's house. He actually faced it. Several times we have had dream of the decision we have taken and God revealed the solution on what we are going to face and we missed it. Jacob missed it. We are celebrating that he saw ladder but remember he did not climb the ladder. The ladder was not for angels. Angels don't need ladder. They have wings to fly. Their spirit they can appear disappear. They don't need ladder to descend and ascend. Only men need ladder to climb. Then look at it. Look at it. Angels are descending and ascending. If Jacob knew, he will hold one of the angels. The angel won't talk to him. He will simply tell him, follow me. And that was why when he was returning from Laban, he saw a man that looked like one of the angels that we are descending and ascending. He said, your face looks familiar. I will not let you go unless I have missed you when I was going. And now I cannot miss you anymore. I do not see God standing up, but I have seen you upon one of these ladders change me or oh, I will not let you go for the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violent shall take it by force ladies and gentlemen you will have to dream again are you hearing what I'm saying you have to dream again stand to your feet let me stop here for tonight you have to dream again remember that before he left Laban's house God had to make him dream to understand how the blessings can change. God had to make him dream. If he had met God and climbed up to meet God at that peak, since he could see God, why didn't he climb? He met this angel and said, I saw you when I didn't know the school of change. I have gone through the school of change and I understand that we don't let opportunity go, go like that. A lot of us have let opportunity went. Several times opportunity left us. At times we do not even know there were opportunities. At times we, we, we know. At times we do not know. We wake up and we only say thank you Jesus. And you go, you don't just wake up from those kind of dreams and say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus doesn't solve it. You will have to consciously pray it out consciously take yourself at times you will have to tell yourself I want to dream this dream again never forget one dream that I had that my wife woke me from sleep a dream 
Very sweet dream. Hi. My dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear. Wake up. She shook me and said, like, I said, what is it? He said, money devotion. I said, oh God. Money devotion. Oh. This money devotion. I was to collect this 10 million naira. <laughs> I said I must sleep again. It didn't come to you today. You have to dream again. Touch your head. Say my mind. Be open. Say my mind. Be open. Say give way for God to step in. Say, my mind, give way for God to step in. Say, my mind, give way for God to step in. For the last time, say, my mind, give way for God to step in. When God will visit you, I cripple you. Never you stand before God. Let my spirit operate. Say, in the name of Jesus, I empower my spirit and bring my mind under subjection. Say, in the name of Jesus, listen to me. If you carry your mind, go to where God is, you will hear God because your mind is corrupt. There are two categories of people on earth. Those who are transformed and those who are conformed. We have confirmation and transformation. It is better to be transformed than to be conformed. It is better being transformed than being conformed. And your mind will always make you want to conform. That's what your mind, your mind wants good things and easy things. Difficult. Your mind doesn't want stressful things. Easy and good. And if it is difficult, your mind will quickly give you alternative. Why can't you? That is what your mind. Why can't you? Why won't you? Why won't you? That's what your mind will always tell you. Say, my mind, in this matter, you have no say. I have made a. I have. I have missed a lot of opportunity. You make me forget some en encounters. Encounters that would have helped my life. Encounters that would have deprived me from the problem I'm going through. You have made me miss those encounters. From today, give way. Say give way. When God is speaking, give way. When God is giving instruction, give way. When I wake up from my dream, Give way and allow my spirit to begin to function. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. We are only going to pray one prayer. Just one. Just one. We will pray the prayer. God, give me another chance. Don't say second chance because there is going to be third chance. Fourth chance fifth chance. Don't say second. Say another. Another has no number. It doesn't matter how, how many times you pray for another. It has no number. God doesn't see it as number. Another. God, give me another chance that I may avenge my enemies. You have given me instruction but I forgot easily. You have given me instruction on how to keep my, 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 is it bread? Those kind of twisted head is called what? Bread, right? Yes, on how to keep and survive with my bread. But I forgot. I want you to know that Samson telling Delilah was not deliberate. He forgot. His mind was the one speaking to him. And then he forgot that he shouldn't be told. He should not be told. God, I forgot. Remember that his wife, I think the name of his father was Manuel or so. Is it the mother or father? Manuel. The Bible says it was in three that the, the angel appeared to her concerning the conception of something. It was in three. But they forgot. They 
forgot. And the day they forgot, that was the day the strength was served. We are going to pray one prayer. Like I told you earlier before I started, every one of us here, 100%, not 99.8 everything that has happened to our life in one way or the other you have had the dream it's just that you cannot remember if in your life at your age some of us are 40 some of us are 60 some of us are 65 you know some of us are going to 70 some of us are 20 some of us are 10 some of us are 12 some of us are 16 and you cannot remember 20 dreams something is wrong that is the way the enemy will at times when you wake up even if your dream does not make sense write it and continue the journey you will meet it you will meet it somewhere I have told you before I say my brethren write your dreams the enemy that's the easiest way he can deal with you he said write your dreams write it because of the purpose of forgetfulness write it down even if you are prayed about it write it down so that when something is looking like it you know that the prayer was not enough you will rise again and quench it because the fire does not rise at once the fire starts from an ignition something must say when you hear yeah it's gone you know, you allow it to get ablaze first the, the, the water that will take just a cup can take 20 tons to quench that. Raise your hand up. Say, my name is Bishop Miracle Masin. Call your name. I stand in the presence of God right now. Understanding that angels of dreams are right here. Sponsorer of good dreams are right here. To bring fulfillment of what God has placed me on earth for. Therefore, as I begin to pray, Oh God, I have come to understand that I have missed some opportunity. Via dreams, some of the problem I am going through, I am sure you have spoken to me. I am aware and I believe that you have given me instruction. It's just that I couldn't remember or take cognizance. Oh God, give me another chance. Oh God, give me another chance. Ladies and gentlemen, if wait before you pray, if Jacob has climbed that ladder, what God would have revealed to Jacob, he would tell him the mystery of his father and his father, father, and his father, 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 father in one night. What would have taken him 300 years, he would get it in two hours or one hour of a dream. Dream is an easy vehicle to your promised land. You can be in a strange land, but in your dream, you are already in your promised land. So it gives you hope. There is no hope without a promise. Say, oh God, my father, as I begin to pray now, give me another chance. May I dream again so I can avenge my enemy. So I can avenge my enemy. Give me a dream again so I can avenge my enemy. Open your mouth and begin to pray this prayer. We are going to pray only one prayer. So pray it well. This is the only prayer. Another chance, oh God. Another chance, oh God. I have come to understand that what I'm going through right now, you have revealed them to me. But I do not understand. You have sent them to me. But I do not understand. Oh God. Another chance. Oh God. Give me another chance. Give me another opportunity. Give me another opportunity. Oh God. Give me another opportunity. Oh God. Give me another opportunity. Give me another opportunity. You have been blessed by the words you have heard. Please let us know by contacting us on our social media page on Facebook at the Word of God Worldwide Gospel City Family. Help us reach more people in need of this message by sharing with your friends and your family or call us 
on plus two three four eight one zero four eight four eight eight four one or plus two three four eight one three five six four three zero four four to make a special order for a friend today.